Hey guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm making another dimensional flower card and I'm wanting to show you guys this time that it's really not as um, overwhelming or stressful as you might think because these are some really pretty and realistic flowers. This is paper. This is not a real flower. So what I have, what this is, this is me. Um, I am just like you guys. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with new things when I don't really know what I'm doing yet and what I found with these kind of flowers be, or these kind of cards is that I've not done a lot of them but then once I follow the instructions it's not that big of a deal but it's still in the back of my mind I'm thinking oh my god this is going to be hard and it's actually not. I found a trick that I'm hoping is going to help you guys. I mentioned it on a recent um, little mini live stream and I'm hoping like I said I'm hoping that this is going to help out. What I'm doing is I'm sitting and watching YouTube or whatever, multitasking, watching TV, whatever, while I'm doing my die cutting, doing the different pieces that are going to take some time. So doing the die cuts to get all of them done does take a little time. Uh, this specific die, we're working today with the mock orange and this one, um, for this little piece here, is two pieces. It's going to be a four petal flower. It's not a complicated flower. It only takes, it takes about three to four of these for your card. It really depends on how many blossoms do you want on your card. I'm going to do quite a few. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I cut this one out three times so that I've got six on my card. I cut the stem out twice. And then for each of these flowers, because this die gives you the petals for one blossom, you need one of your stamen pieces. So that's what I did. I basically cut everything out and I do have some, you'll be able to see that. I'm going to be showing you guys what I did, some behind the scenes. I was basically just, I was actually in the middle of a Zoom meeting while I was doing the coloring and shaping of about like four of the flowers. Anyhow, next we're going to show you how to make those little blossoms. So I'm doing the very first batch that I had cut out using my die cutting machine while I'm watching <laughs> Susan Tierney. I will leave her video here. Um, she is the expert when it comes to all things paper flowers, mostly because she is a gardener herself. She knows all these things. My knowledge of plants is basically what telling my husband that he's making up words. Anyway, um, I'm using a um, dark brown for the stem. I used, I'm using my Spectrum Noir. I used EB7 for the stems. And then I'm using a couple of colors of green. And I don't think I saturated the paper nearly enough because I did have a little bit of a demarcation line and took me a little while to get that blended out. Just like regular alcohol marker coloring, right? Um, I used AG5 as the lighter and JG6 as the darker. So I'm coloring up all of the leaves, basically having the darker part near the stem and then going a little bit lighter when we go out towards the edge of our um, little leaves here. Because these are dimensional, we're gonna wanna have some color on the back too. So I am just doing the exact same coloring well, pretty much on the back that I did on the front. I've got the dark brown, which was EB7, I'm going over the stem. And then for the, the green on the back, I'm just going with my lighter green and that was the AG5. I would say use what you have in your stash. You know what colors of markers you've got that work well together. We're just basically wanting the, the leaves to be to a medium to dark color, I think. Um, looking at Susan's, Stop recording. her, um, her sample that she did for us, I can tell that my leaves are a bit darker than hers were. It's okay, Stop they're still gonna look fabulous. So the next step is to put the 
I don't know, the spine and veins, whatever they're called, the line down the center of our leaves. So I actually cut out two of the stem and leaf pieces. So on one of them, I'm doing the, the lines on one side, on the other, I'm doing the other because I basically had one facing one way and one facing the opposite to kind of give a zigzaggy kind of look on the front of the card doesn't really matter because you colored both sides, right? So we're just drawing a line down the center and then we're gonna fold each of those leaves uh, on that crease so that we can start shaping the, the pretty leaves. And then we're gonna also mess around with the edges of the, the leaf as well. I would say on most leaves, not just the orange, the, the mock orange ones, but on most leaves, you're gonna want to have them kind of bend around a little bit because most leaves are not completely stiff. They're going to have some places that are not quite as as perfect, I guess. You want them to look more natural, right? Next, we're going to go on to the petals. Now for the petals, you want a light green, not as dark as what I did here. I changed over to a different one further along I went. Uh, but you do want to have a little bit of a green cast to the center of your petals. The petals are actually white. These are mock orange and they're going to be white with a, a little bit of a greenish tint in the center. I'm actually going to be using um, a yellow green to make them brighter on after I get done with this first one. Anyway, on each of the petals, we're gonna do some shaping with our loop tool, or you can use a ball stylus for that. We're basically just breaking down all of the fibers in that petal piece. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take our tweezers and kind of bend back the edges. Same kind of thing that we did on the leaves. We want to give a more natural look to the edges and these are gonna be some soft blossoms. So we're gonna just take our tweezers and just kind of curl them around a bit. I played a bit with mine. I wanted them to be even softer looking and I'd say that the more you rough up those edges, the more that you curve them around and break down those fibers, the more natural they're gonna look. We're gonna take the tweezers down the center and pinch the center and then we're going to cup the whole thing. So these are gonna be two little petals that fold in on themselves. Next, I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue to the cupped end, and I'm gonna place that in the center of our other two petal piece. And it's gonna basically create a little cross. So this is a real simple four petal flower. I think it is Stop just recording. lovely. Now that we've got that one done, we're gonna play with the stamen. Now the stamen, first off, the size of the dies kinda makes it so they can only make our little um, stamen pieces so thin. So what we have to do on these to make them fuller, to make the whole stamen bundle fuller, is we're gonna cut down each individual stamen, trying to stay as close to the center as we can. I am not good at that. <laughs> so I am, I, I was good. I didn't accidentally cut off any piece and it did wind up making it a little bit fuller, which is fabulous. What she does after all of this though, is when she gets the stamen piece all assembled, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, is she adds pollen, you know, paper flower pollen to these. I don't have any of that. The paper flower pollen that Susan Tierney used on this card on rather on this um, flower on the mock oranges are some yellow pollen and it looks so lovely, but you know what? I think my card is going to look out, look fine anyway. If you're missing something, it's fine. Nobody's gonna know the difference. Um, those other pieces do add a little extra to it. So if you've got access to that pollen, great. I don't have any. So now that we've got all of that cut for our stamen piece, we're gonna take our tweezers and hold the little end there, the little tab, and add some glue all down the line there. Then we're going to roll it all up onto itself.
Next, we're going to add a little bit of glue in the center there and add our stamens and let it sit off to the side to dry. This is a great way to do these. I basically just knocked them all out in basically no time at all. And yeah, gave them all a chance to dry a little bit before putting them down on my card. I think it's turned out so cute. So now that all of my blossoms and everything is all done, the, the flowers are all complete. I'm going to go ahead and put it all together on a cart. This piece here is a leftover scrap from an embossed panel that I did with the embossing folder of the month for February 2024. And I used half of it on another card. So I'm just going to use the other piece. Actually, I used less than half of it on the other one. That's okay. I'm going to use the rest of it just down the center of my card. It's going to give a little bit of color behind the background. And I think this is kind of the way that I want this card to look. So stop recording. So I like the way that they're laid out there. So I'm just going to take a picture of that and leave that picture off to the side on my phone to kind of remind me of the way I think I want the card to go. Now this one was really nice because we've got our stem and our leaves all on one piece instead of individually. So I'm just going to add and the way I did that I actually shaped the, the leaves so it's facing one way on one side and one way on the other. So one of them is right side up and one of them is going to be right side down. That's okay. I'm going to add the some glue to the back of the stem. And I think I'm going to leave the leaves for now anyway. Just leave them loose. Okay, just add this down right about here. And then before that really has time to catch, I'm going to, yes, that's going to be perfect. Add some glue to the back of this one and do the same thing going in the opposite direction. There we go. And now I can start putting my blossoms on. All I'm going to do to add these to the card is just add some liquid glue to the back and place them down and kind of just let them sit. The glue is going to adhere and dry clear. So it's not going to be a big deal. You don't have to worry about it, but you will need to let it sit off to the side to dry. I think these are just super pretty. I did change my mind on coloring. Um, instead of using the lightest green that I used for my leaves on the inside, which is what, when Susan Tierney said it, she was actually talking about the pollen, or I'm sorry, the, um, she used on hers, she used some pan pastels. I did not. I just used the, um, I just used alcohol ink, just my alcohol markers. So, yeah, hers are going to look a little different than mine. And she said to use the lightest green from her pan pastels. And I took that to mean that it would still be fine to use the lightest color of my green marker. And I've decided that I don't really like it as much. <laughs> so instead, I wound up coming back with another color of green from my stash that I think looks better. So I do have one blossom that's a little bit too green in there. And the other ones, I think, look much nicer with this, this lighter shade. This one was the YG2 that I wound up using for the rest of them. But if I hadn't have told you, you probably wouldn't have even noticed. Okay, so I've got two up top here. And I think I'm going to add a third in the center over here. Because these type of flowers do wind up coming in bunches. So just adding that one down. And like I said, I'm just going to let it sit to the side and let this dry. And then I can add, actually, I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment on. I've got a couple of these already cut out and do I want to pop it up on foam this time? 
I think I'm going to just glue it down straight. This is Thanks for Your Friendship, and it's from the Clear Stamp and Die of the Month for February 2024. That was that lovely Lily Arch. And I think that that sentiment is just perfect. So I'm going to let that dry and then share some finished photos with you guys. <laughs> 